looked on Facebook and looked through your newsfeed and felt inadequate? Have you ever opened up your Facebook and saw a picture of somebody's bright, shiny moment or their perfect family photo and then felt like your life might just not be quite good enough? Have you ever been scrolling through your newsfeed or watching the news and what you saw made you feel more or less happy? We've all been there and we've gone through those experiences where we let other things influence how we feel. We live in this world of social media and social comparison where we're constantly looking to other people, we're looking to the media and we're looking to the news and we're comparing ourselves. So often, we look at someone's front story or what they post or share or what the media chooses selectively to share with us. And we look at that and we compare it to ourselves. and we look at the backstory of our life, the behind the scenes part that nobody else sees. And when we do that, it can leave us feeling happy, sad, depressed, anxious, full of ourselves, such a range of emotions. And why is that? Why is it that we create these stories in our head? Why do we consciously or unconsciously allow everything that's around us to influence how we feel? It creates a world that's pretty hard to navigate, where it's hard to go around and not let everything else affect how we feel. Especially when we look at things like social media, it can have a really profound effect on things like our happiness. So this cartoon here says, I can't talk right now. I'm simulating happiness on Facebook. <laughs> and especially in terms of happiness, the reality is what gets posted can create an artificial picture of what it looks like or feels like to be happy. Now, this cartoon here, it said, my project is simply this. I want to study and prove once and for all that there's more to the belief than money can buy happiness. I'm a happiness researcher. This isn't particularly my research question, but I'm really interested in learning about happiness and why it is that it creates happiness in our world. When we look to things like social media, we can get really confused because this is sort of an illusion of the world. And when we take that illusion and compare it to our reality, or we let it affect how we feel, we can kind of start to create a reality that isn't painting an exact picture of happiness. I believe that Oftentimes, what's promoted in terms of happiness is not correct. And I'd like to suggest today that the pursuit of happiness, that common belief that happiness is something to achieve, is in fact incorrect. So if I can rewind a few years, back when I was studying my PhD dissertation, I was trying to decide on what topic to study, and I couldn't think of a better thing to study than that elusive unicorn that is happiness. When we look at what we do, what motivates so many of our behaviors, and what's at the core between so many things that we do, it is happiness. We want to feel happy, we want to look happy, we want to be happy, right? And at the same time, when I was looking at my life, and I was looking at happiness, I always felt like it was just beyond my reach. So I wanted to study happiness and learn more about it so that I could grab that happiness that just seemed almost right at the tip of my fingertips. I began to look at the research and I began to see things like happiness is pretty much the basic human pursuit. Everybody wants to be happy and it almost looks like this hallmark thing that is a, a symbol of good psychological health if you're happy. I was learning things like if you look to the literature, you see that happy people tend to live longer, they tend to experience a greater quality of life, they tend to make more money and have longer and more fulfilling marriages than their unhappy peers. And it was really starting to get interesting and I was like, okay, so this happiness thing, I think I want that. When you look at happiness, it began to appear to be a key ingredient in terms of well-being. And as I was learning that, it kind of made sense and it was tempting to conclude that happiness is always good. And the more you achieve or aim for happiness, the better your life will be. I was surprised, however, to find out that that isn't necessarily the case. It turns out that there is an idea that there is a dark side of happiness. And sometimes when we value happiness, it can lead us to feel unhappy. And sometimes, the more we strive for happiness, the less likely we might be 
to attain happiness. That's quite a paradox, right? So it's interesting. So if you dig into the literature a little bit on this, we sometimes might think that happiness, the more your happiness goes up, the more your well-being goes up. Turns out it's not a linear relationship. It more looks like this U-curve here. So for a while, as we increase our happiness, our overall well-being tends to increase. However, it hits a point. After that point, it starts to go down. And once it passes that line there, a certain threshold, it can actually have detrimental effects in terms of our happiness. There was a big review done in 2011, and what they found was that oftentimes striving for happiness, especially when you're narrow-minded and focusing really intently on happiness, it can have negative effects in your life. There was more research done looking at this idea because it's very perplexing, it's very counterintuitive. In this study, what happened is they brought research participants into a lab and they had them listen to music. Some of the participants, the control participants, so the blue on the graph here, they were told nothing. They were told, come on in, listen to some music, and tell us how you feel. Another group came in, the purple bar here, and they were told, we're going to play some music for you, and we want you to feel happy. Try to feel happy for us. And so again, the participants came in, and they assessed if they were feeling happy and if they were feeling sad. And at the end of the study, what you can see is the people that were told to feel happy felt less happy than the people that weren't told that at all. So the people that were really trying for happiness ended up not achieving it. Now, these studies, there's several other ones that sort of highlight the same idea. This cartoon here says, truth be told, it's a clam, he's talking to his therapist, says, truth be told, I'm not that happy. And for so many of us, it might be that when we try really hard or we strive for happiness, it might be counterproductive. We might actually be further away from happiness than we thought. Could be, perhaps, that when we strive for happiness, we might be aiming at the wrong target. There might be something going wrong. It might be like we're trying to run east to see the sunset. So before we go off and explore that sunset, there is one other key piece of information that I think is really worth discussing. And this is the idea of happiness and sadness. Now, growing up, I always thought that the goal was be happy and don't be sad. And whenever I felt sad, I thought, oh, you know, I really want to feel happy instead. I was surprised when I started digging into the research that it turns out that happiness and sadness aren't two ends of the same continuum. They're actually two different constructs. So it is possible to feel happy while feeling sad. And it's possible to feel sadness while at the same time you're experiencing the feeling of happiness. So to prove that, we had another research study here, and this one the same thing. They brought a bunch of participants into the lab. However, this time, instead of listening to music, they showed participants clips from movies. So in the control group, the first group there, participants came in and they watched pretty neutral movies. They were chosen to not really evoke a lot of emotion at all. So not happy feelings, just kind of neutral. The second group came in and they were shown clips from movies such as Life is Beautiful. They specifically picked clips that were intended to evoke emotions of happiness or sadness. And what we can see, that condition is called the bittersweet condition, so the one on the end there. In that condition, more people spent a lot of time in what are called mixed feelings. So what that means is they were experiencing happiness and sadness at the same time. And we can see this pattern and trend not only in research, we can also see it in Hollywood. So here's a picture of Harrison Ford, and he's going to illustrate this for us. So if you take a look at half of Harrison Ford's face there, he seems pretty happy. If you take a look at the other half of his face, kind of the opposite. So when we look at this picture of Harrison Ford, it's a living example of someone's embodying this idea of mixed emotions. So if we understand the difference between happiness and sadness, that they're different things, that we don't need one or the other, we can have both, and the fact that sometimes pursuing or chasing happiness might not let us be happy, and once we get to a certain point of happiness, it might actually have detrimental effects, so perhaps we're pursuing happiness might not be the question we want to ask. There might be something different that we can ask that might give us a better approach. 
I'd like to suggest that instead of taking the common approach, which is kind of this Christopher Columbus approach, I like to call it. So Christopher Columbus was an explorer, and he set out to find new, the new world. So he's very goal-oriented, he knew what he wanted. In terms of happiness, I would see this explorer approach as going out and finding happiness and getting it and seizing it and earning it and kind of really actively pursuing it. Instead of that approach, what if we looked at happiness a little bit different? What if we looked at happiness the way that Beethoven looked at composing music? I believe that the truth about happiness lies in that approach. And what I mean by that is when Beethoven set out to create his music, it wasn't just narrowly on, focused on one note. It looked at the entire musical number that he was creating. If we think about that in terms of happiness, and we look at the Zen proverb here, it says, it's the silence between the notes that make the music. And when we look at music, we play the same note over and over and over again. We'd end up with one long, continuous note, the same all the time. However, that's not the music that we enjoy. When we look at music and we start to see, for example, the pauses and the spaces between the notes and the music, and instead of looking at them as a void, as a gap between the notes and the things that matter, when we start to look at those spaces and see the potential for greatness, not only in the notes, but in the spaces between the notes, and we start to look at the range of notes, you can have low notes and you can have high notes and a variety of different ones, when they all come together collectively, it makes a beautiful sound, it makes beautiful music. If we look at happiness from the same perspective, and we look at how we can be the composer of our happiness, it really changes the conversation. When we take that and we look at it from a different perspective, we might see happiness from a totally different lens. I don't believe that happiness all the time is the goal. I don't believe that we want to strive for that all the time. When I look at my life, and I look at the moments of sadness, the heartbreak, the challenges, all of those have made me who I am today. And I feel so grateful for all of the experiences of my life because they also help me to appreciate those really happy moments. I think that when we look at that all together and we acknowledge that we have happy notes and sad notes and all of them and they all come together to create this beautiful, beautiful music that is our life, it changes our perspective. It can also help us when we start to look to social media, to things like Facebook or we watch the news and we're watching, we're looking on our screen, and we're not having a really good day, and we see someone that is, we can realize that, okay, that's the note that they're playing today, and I have a different one. It starts to take the pressure off of ourselves. It allows us to be more compassionate and kind to ourselves because we can acknowledge that throughout our life, we're going to have different moments, and they all come together in the end to create a beautiful song. So I'd like to invite all of you today to start to think about your life and happiness in a different way. To let go of the idea that happiness is something that you need to seek and to pursue. To embrace the fact that you're going to have a variety of notes and they're all gonna to come together. To allow and invite every single note, every single space, because all of them together will come together and create the beautiful human experience that is life. Thank you.